over the last year, we have been so busy extending our product range with new products that will help people who have Blackmagic camera chains to achieve control over tally and uh, shading um, and interfacing things in different ways. And we have been exposed to so many ideas about how such a topology should be. And we have basically decided that now it was the time to, to document this so people could read a document, a white paper, which we have also produced in a small booklet, that will take you through various options in terms of how you can uh, set the topology up with um, Blackmagic cameras. And just to mention a few, that, that would be uh, whether you have an ATEM switcher or another production switcher system sitting behind um, downstream uh, the cameras, that will severely affect how you want to go about all these things. Naturally, the, the products we sell, which are re relevant to this, would be a lot of shading control. So, um, you see, this is just a lineup of the most typical products that you find in our range. That would be the RCP and RCP Mini, which is essentially two different form factors, but are doing the same thing, just with a more or less interface components. Then we have the CCU, which is conceived as a multi-camera device. So there you have a, an obvious selector for selecting camera one to eight. And uh, we have the CCU Lite, which is kind of hybrid in between because it has like channels, but only concerned with Iris and Master Black. And then finally the C25, which is like a handheld local remote for cameras that will help you not to, to poke uh, the camera touch screen if you want to do local control as a camera operator or an assistant to one. So uh, that's what you see here in, in this document uh, called uh, Strategies for Blackmagic Design Camera Control. And this is uh, online, you can download it from our website and uh, enjoy updates that we'll push into this document as we go along and we experience uh, new things. And then we also have, um, uh, so as the main thing, we'll describe topologies. And, and then we also have um, a chapter on how to move tally over SDI, how to uh, set up uh, efficient monitoring for your CCU operator, uh, uh, B4 lens control, and uh, so on. We also have a section on how to uh, configure your Skyhawk controllers. Let's take a look at the topologies you can set up. And uh, just before we do that, um, you can see in the document, uh, yeah, a presentation of our products. And then we also have an introduction to the uh, SDI ancillary data camera control protocol that Blackmagic has uh, published. And uh, of course, also a quick overview of the products they have, like the Ursa Mini, Ursa Mini Pro, the studio camera and micro studio camera 4K. Now, if you move uh, along to the first chapter uh, on topologies for intercom tally and control data, you will um, find various scenarios. So one of them is this, a plain ATEM switcher based topology. So in this one, you have um, an ATEM switcher sitting as your production switcher. You have maybe the uh, ATEM control software, software control uh, hooked up to the ATEM switcher, one of their broadcast panels. You might even have some of our controllers, either all of these or just some of these, I don't know. And then you would purchase RCPs or such as the C25 remote to shade your cameras. The uh, output of the ATEM switcher would go into such as the ATEM talkback converter, it could also be a video router or a uh, distribution amplifier. The main point is here we are distributing the SDI signal, the program out from the ATEM switcher. We are distributing it out to the cameras over coax or fiber. It could be up to 12G because that's what the ATEM switchers support. And uh, so basically out here on this SDI line, we have color data, tally, intercom audio embedded. And the talkback converter embeds the intercom while the ATEM switcher embeds tally and coloring data. Now, there is a severe problem with this setup and that is each of these RCPs will take up a client connection slot and we have only a limited number. In our experience, it maxes out at eight. So you couldn't connect more than eight clients to your ATEM switcher if you had a 2ME switcher. If you have a 1ME switcher or Television Studio HD, it's five, okay? So 
unless you have nothing else than five RCP panels connected to your ATEM switcher, you will be in trouble because you couldn't have a single RCP for each camera and you would need one for each camera. So that's the limit to this topology. And that's also what I noted with this little piece of text and the warning right there. Of course, we have a solution and we even made a video that explains how that works. Now that's the using the ATEM proxy. So the ATEM proxy is essentially a piece of software that uh, on the one side connects to an ATEM switch as a single client. And then on the other side exposes the same interface. So all um, the RCP controllers could connect to the proxy and to the ATEM switch, it would just look as a single client. So that's a great way to, to deal with this. Then you could have 16 RCPs, no problem. And uh, that's what we, we, we see in, in, uh, in this illustration. So the only change here is really not how stuff is integrated on, on the, the right side of the drawing. That's all the same. And the ATEM switcher is still the device that embeds all this information for tally and camera shading. But the ATEM proxy sits here and all the RCPs will work through that one to the ATEM switch and you don't have the problem of the max number of clients anymore. Of course, if you read the document, you'll be able to, uh, through the text, understand if there are certain limitations to doing it in this and that way and, and so on. So we try to put all those details into the document. So I want to move along now and uh, look at what if you don't have an ATEM switcher in your setup or if you have just any production switcher, what would that mean? So that could be like a Ross Carbonite, uh, TriCaster, VMix and so forth. And none of these would directly support shading your cameras. You would still need the RCPs from uh, a company like us. So in that case, luckily, we can still um, find a solution. So with any production switch and system, you probably still want to move the uh, program out back to the camera. So the camera operators have a chance to see what the, the program uh, signal is. And you would use that, of course, to move uh, shading and tally data and maybe even intercom over to the cameras. And that's what this drawing will show you. Now, because we don't have an ATEM switcher here, we have only up to 3G and not 12G. And to be honest, the 12G is not necessary because uh, even though the cameras would produce 12G, that would be 4K uh, imagery, um, they can still accept a return feed with all this data coming in a different format. So 3G is fine as a return signal, even though you're producing 4K. Now, um, so that, that's only a, so it's a 3G uh, return feed. The ATEM talkback converter can still sit here and insert intercom. And the SDI ancillary color data and tally data is uh, embedded before the talkback converter. But in this case, you see we have a box called Ethernet SDI link. That's the Skyhoy product. And uh, it will do the same as the ATEM switch essentially did. It will accept commands from the RCPs we have right here, going into the Ethernet SDI link. And that will multiplex all the camera shading data into a single SDI stream over Ethernet on, on the RCP side. So on the RCP side through Ethernet to the Ethernet SDI link box and then it's embedded on SDI, a single SDI uh, line to the, the distribution amplifier. So that's one way you can do it. The other way is to uh, simply daisy chain the RCPs. So uh, by daisy chaining RCPs you don't need the Ethernet SDI link box. You can simply take an SDI cable from one to the next, to the next, to the next RCP. And then all the, the shading data, data from the first RCP will channel down through the other ones and end up um, in your distribution amplifier. That's another way you can do it. So it has some drawbacks. And one of them is that this system would be some more um, error prone if, if uh, there's a bad cable or if, if one of the RCPs loses power and so forth, you, you have a more fragile, fragile infrastructure uh, using this. Um, but it, it's basically possible as, as a way to go about it if you um, have, um, yeah, if, if you, if you want to do it like that. Uh, that was actually one thing I just wanted to see here. Yeah, okay, so one thing I didn't comment on if you had any production switch is that tally data needs to get embedded on 
the uh, return feed too. And you can see that the default option would be that your production switch in some way inserts tally data on uh, the SDI return feed by uh, contact closures, basically. So you would have a GPI interface that you hook up with the RCPs, which will then insert tally packages on the SDI return stream. Um, the TriCaster, interestingly enough, has this feature built in nowadays, or at least one of their models have, or some of their models. So um, there's a chance that it's already in the SDI data, it seems. Now, and it's the same if you use the daisy chaining feature, it's kind of the same thing that you can do there. Okay, let's move on because um, in, in these scenarios we have been looking at if you have multiple controllers and you have a single return feed, that's kind of the common denominator so far. So far. Uh, multiple control panels, one for each camera, but a single return feed that's distributed, possibly through the um, ATEM talkback converter. That's usually the distributing link because it has the fiber connections. So now we have a topology where we still have multiple controllers, but we also have multiple return feeds. And um, that's kind of easy because each RCP has an SDI output, which you could just run to the camera. You can even take it through uh, video routers and um, uh, reclocking devices. And uh, generally you will experience that the ancillary data is, is passed through. Uh, we've even heard from some of our clients that you could do this over uh, a satellite link. So just like you have closed captioning that might survive satellite links, you can also um, maybe experience that you can do the same with ancillary data for tally and camera shading. But uh, you may not be, be sure. Okay, so just, just a side note. Um, the main point here was that it's really not a problem if you want to run a return feed from each RCP out to your camera. That's easy. That's the default coming out of the box. So in that case, if you want to use a uh, ATEM talkback converter to insert uh, or to have uh, enjoy some kind of intercom, you could actually put it before the RCPs. So having a distribution amplifier that will, uh, or basically no, you wouldn't need a distribution amplifier for that. But if you had the ATEM talkback converter sitting before the RCPs, then the output of, of each camera would go into the RCP and then out to the camera. And you would get shading data into the SDI stream along with all your, your talkback um, um, audio. So that's one way you can go to. Uh, it seems, yeah, you know if you're in the in the market for this kind of solution, because to me it seems like you at least lose the option of, of going fiber um, from the ATEM talkback converter. But that's one way you can go to. So um, let's take a look at the next topology. So in, in this case, we have uh, gone down from multiple controllers to a single controller. So we find that people tend to group either on the side that they want a single controller for each camera, or they want a single controller for all cameras. Yeah, so a single controller for each camera, that's multiple controllers. That's the scenarios we've been looking at so far. So if you want a single controller, we have been in that business for quite some time with the CCU, which is a controller that has a camera selector. So you can select one or more cameras at a time and then shade them. And, um, that, that's a perfect product for doing that. If you want an RCP to do the same, uh, which some customers do, then you should be aware that the, the, the analog joystick kind of poses a problem to this because the, the, the absolute position of the joystick means that, um, I mean, if the, absolute, if, if the jo joystick is sitting in the middle, it's like 50% uh, iris, right? So uh, if you change to a different camera, and that's already at 100%, it would be kind of weird if the joystick is sitting in, in a straight up position 50% and, and what to do from there. So there, there are some issues with that. That's uh, the reason why the multi-camera controller has encoders. So we use an encoder for the iris because that's always relative. It's basically just notching up or down the iris based on the pulses you generate. Okay, but we have that kind of infrastructure here. As you can see, we can have some, um, and, and in this case, we're also using an ATEM switcher. So we have uh, various ATEM clients involved, like the software control, a panel, uh, some GPI boxes maybe, and, and small utility controllers. And then we have 
a multi-camera RCP controller. So you don't need the ATEM proxy in this case, because you're probably going to stay below the max number of connected clients to the ATEM switcher anyway. You will also enjoy that you have a up to 12 GSDI return signal, if that means anything to you, because it's the ATEM switcher that generates and inserts data on the SDI return stream. So, um, that was the single controller, single return ATEM switcher scenario. Very simple and uh, it doesn't seem to pose a problem in most cases. Now, what if you have just any switcher? Well, it's still kind of simple because then you just take the program output from your production system and uh, takes it into your multi-camera controller like the CCU or RCP. And uh, you do that along with the GPI interface so you can also generate tally signals. Uh, and that's especially true for the CCU. Um, uh, so that's, that's the scenario you have uh, right here. So to summarize the different options you have for topologies with Blackmagic cameras, they fall into three broad categories. That would be having multiple panels and then a single return feed, multiple panels and multiple return feeds, where the single return feed was really the challenge because the question is how multiple panels get all their data into the single stream. And there, there would be different options depending on whether you had an ATEM switcher or a different production switcher system. Finally, we also have the single control surface, which does multi-camera control in the same surface. And that would be like the Skahoy CCU product. But again, it's a simple scenario. And these have now been outlined. You can read much more about them in the document about uh, camera topologies we have put out in uh, this uh, main section outlining all these options.